வணக்கம் தி மஸ்ட் நோ சீரீஸ் சிம்பிளிஃபைங் லேர்னிங் ஏர்லி ஆக்டிவ் மொபிலைசேஷன் ப்ரோட்டோகால் ஆஃப்டர் ஃபிளெக்ஸா டெண்டன் ரிப்பேர் Before we see the different protocols of the early active mobilization method, we need to understand nine basic points. Since the late 1980s and early 1990s, early active motion protocols developed in response to experimental and clinical studies that demonstrated beneficial effects of this particular protocol. And by this method, there is an increase in the amount of tendon excursion within the sheath. The increases in force may be associated with improved tendon excursion and improved outcomes, but it will not accelerate the tendon repair process. The early active mobilization protocols have been possible because the repair techniques have improved and stronger, less bulky sutures have been innovated that glide much more easily. Even in this early active mobilization protocol, most published protocols start the motion at 24 to 48 hours after surgery. This is because the resistance to flexion imposed by the surrounding edematous tissues is lesser only after a couple of days. Even though active movements are encouraged, almost all protocols use a dorsal blocking splint like those used for early passive mobilization protocols. The exercises and the exercise frequency may vary in the different protocols, but all protocols protect the tendon by limiting active flexion for the first 3 to 6 weeks. An important point to remember is that combined metacarpophalangeal joint flexion and wrist extension has been found to produce the least tension on the repaired site and to allow the most differential excursion between the FDS and FDP of the repaired tendons. This has been proved by cadaveric studies too. The basis of early active motion protocols depend on a strong repair technique. and the force application during rehabilitation must be less than the tensile strength of the repair to prevent gapping or rupture even passive digital flexion causes a load of 2 to 4 newtons on the tendon and strong composite grip causes a force of about 70 newtons so the tensile strength of the repair that has been done must be compared with the force that is going to be applied by the post operative rehabilitation program for instance in a two strand repair with epitendinous suture the original 2500 g tensile strength of the repair will keep coming down progressively and by 3 weeks it reaches around 1700 g if the active protocol has been started we need to remember that when you start active composite fist formation it can generate load up to 4000 g which may be detrimental to the repair whereas in a four strand repair with an epitendinous suture the corresponding tensile strength of the repair is around 2800 g at 3 weeks which is capable of bearing the loads there are many protocols that advocate early active mobilization we shall be dealing with four of them the belfast and sheffield regimen the strickland regimen the evans and thompson regimen and the silverskjold and may regimen the protocol that had been developed in belfast was then studied in two independent studies in the united kingdom immediately after surgery the dorsal blocking splint is applied with the wrist in 20 degree flexion and metacarpophalangeal joints in 80 to 90 degrees of flexion allowing full ip joint extension the exercise is begun 24 hours after repair for zone 3 injuries and 48 hours after repair in zone 2 injuries the exercises are performed every 4 hours within the splint including all the digits and consisting of two repetitions each of full passive flexion active flexion and active extension this is continued for 4 weeks and at the end of 4 weeks the splint is discontinued if the tendon glide is poor or if the tendon glide is good it is continued for 6 weeks the strickland regimen or the indiana hand center regimen that developed in 1993 required a repair with a four strand suture and an epitendinous suture it also needed a good patient motivation and comprehension controlled edema 
and minimal wound complications for this protocol to be put in place. The main concept of this Strickland protocol is the place hold active mobilization. Immediately after surgery, a dorsal blocking splint is applied most of the time with the wrist in 20 degrees of flexion and metacarpophalangeal joints at 50 degrees of flexion. When the exercise is started, the exercise splint is used which is otherwise known as a synergistic splint. It is hinged at the wrist allowing full wrist flexion but wrist extension is limited to 30 degrees. Full digit flexion and full interphalangeal joint extension are allowed but MP joint extension is limited to 60 degrees. Every hour the patient performs the Strickland version of the modified Duran exercises that is 15 repetitions of passive range of movement to the PIP and DIP joints and the entire digit in the dorsal blocking splint. This is followed by 25 repetitions of place hold digit flexion in the exercise splint. This consists of the therapist flexing all the fingers and keeping them in the flexed position and the patient is asked to apply minimal force to maintain these fingers in that position. This is done for 5 seconds. This is continued for 4 weeks. After 4 weeks, the TNODC splint is discontinued but the patient still continues to wear the dorsal blocking splint at all times except during the TNODC exercises. The TNODC exercises continue every 2 hours with 25 repetitions of active flexion of the fingers along with extension exercise for the wrist and also tendon gliding exercises. After about 7 to 8 weeks, the splint is discontinued and resistive exercises are initiated. The concept of the Evans and Thompson technique of early active mobilization is minimal active muscle tendon tension that is MAMTT. The minimal tension required to overcome the viscoelastic resistance of the antagonistic muscle tendon unit. This is not a protocol per se but these are guidelines to be used by the therapist. So it can be adjusted according to the strength of the suture, the presence of any unusual factors such as severe edema and it does also consider the anticipated potential drop in the tensile strength of the repair between day 5 and day 15 and adapts to the program accordingly. So it can be used even for a conventional modified Kessler Mason suture with an epitendinous suture which is a two strand core suture. The active motion component is performed only by the therapist up to 3 weeks. The Silver Skjold and May early active mobilization protocol is done after a modified Kessler repair and epitendinous circumferential cross stitch. It is similar to the Kleinert early passive mobilization protocol but there is one difference in the exercises. The splint is the same the dorsal blocking splint with rubber band traction applied to the finger tips through a palmar pulley. When the exercise is done active extension and passive flexion are achieved with the elastic traction just as in the Kleinert passive protocol. During passive flexion light active muscle contraction is allowed for 2 to 3 seconds and this active motion is done only under supervision by a therapist or surgeon for the first 4 weeks and the splint is removed at 8 weeks.